Welcome back everybody. Today we're going over the Beretta ARX 100 rifle that you see right here. This funny looking little rifle. And uh, we did a bunch of shooting with it. We've had it in for a while now, a few months at least at this point. And uh, so far it's been 100% reliable. I know a lot of people say, you know, if a rifle is not accurate, it's not interesting. Why well, say if it's not reliable, it's not interesting. So on that note, it's passed. We'll just put that out there. No doubt about it. Very, very reliable little system. It's uh, operated by a piston, so it's a piston-driven gun, not a direct impingement-driven gun. Chambered in 5.56, so a lot of comparisons are going to be out there to the AR-15. We'll get into that a little bit later on in the video as well. Um, some of the differences, similarities, and things like that. But what we're going to do now is actually step outside, um, take a look, and see what kind of accuracy you can get out of this rifle. Because that's been one thing that folks out there have talked about. Up front, the trigger is not so great, which you're going to see here in a second. So that's going to sort of uh, affect accuracy, if you will. But we'll see just exactly what it'll do coming up next. Accuracy test time, uh, we got the Primary Arms 5X scope on there, the ACSS reticle. Target down range at 100 yards, you can probably hear and or see. We got some wind out here today, 5 to 10 mile an hour, full value. And uh, in the gun right now, we got Freedom Munitions, 55 grain stuff, and then uh, we got a couple other loads. And uh, we'll test it out and see what we can do. Next up will be the Wolf Gold, 55 grain stuff, brass case. A lot of people are always asking me to test it, so. Well, we just found something out right here. The Lancer 10 round mags do not seat in there. So, there's some more data for you. Anyway, let's we'll switch the mags, no biggie. And you know, I don't know why I even thought this would work, but we have a Gen 3 P mags. I just used the same mags in all my accuracy tests, and I think I didn't think about it. But for ammo, we have Federal 69 grain match. Check it out. One thing's for sure, when you shoot this gun, that heavy trigger, the trigger on the gun I have is about 10 pounds, definitely comes into play when we're shooting groups. There's just no getting around it. Uh, you know, you could work with a mil-spec AR trigger and make decent groups of it, but this one, these results are actually pretty much what I expected. So I think on the first group, we were favoring a little bit high with that Freedom Munition. So the two we have, we're right at two inches. I don't know where that third one went. Sorry about that, guys. Um, coming down here, for the gold, again, we're right at two inches. That one's actually two and a quarter inches. And then uh, the federal gold match, 
we're right at an inch and three quarters. So uh, my guess is the gun is inherently more accurate than that, but that's still pretty good accuracy. I mean, we're not complaining about it. It's not a match grade rifle. It is intended to be a combat rifle. So with the trigger, um, I'd imagine if somebody could come out with a aftermarket one out there, which certainly they may, uh, those groups will tighten up. But again, for the intended use of the rifle, the groups aren't bad and are pretty much in line with everything I've seen online about the gun. So that was the accuracy there. You can see my uh, two assistants are in the background there, making sure that this review goes off okay. Um, basically, I wanted to show you guys with a wider angle here on the front steps what you get with the actual gun itself. So you get the Beretta bag here. Uh, it's a nice soft carry bag and uh, comes with the sling. The sling works with the attachment points on the rifle, so the rifle doesn't have QD attachment points, which you'll see in a minute if you haven't already noticed. Um, but this sling, conventional strap type sling, will work just fine on there. It also comes with manuals. And it also comes with a magazine. The magazine it comes with is the uh, USGI type magazine. However, it is stainless steel. It has a nice anti-tilt follower. Seems to be very well made and has functioned flawlessly in this rifle and other rifles we've tried it in. So quality mag for sure. Uh, while we're on the topic of mags, let's uh, discuss what you guys saw out there. The Lancer mag didn't work all that well. Uh, Gen 2 P mags will work just fine. Any USGI type magazine will work just fine. Uh, Tango down mags I think work just fine. The ones I know that don't work are going to be Magpul E-Mags, uh, Surefire 60s, and Magpul Gen 3 Mags. So none of those will work, but there's a pretty wide variety of mags out there that will work with it, so it's not a huge impediment, at least uh, here in the U.S. market anyway. Getting to the gun itself, there's a lot of really cool things going on. We'll start up front and kind of work our way back up front. Here we do have the A2 Birdcage Flash Hider on there. The barrel itself is sort of what we call a pencil profile barrel. It's cold hammer forged and chrome lined. It's made of 4150 steel, so really, really top-notch barrel. These are cold hammer forged up in Maryland. As of right now, I believe they're moving their factory. But currently, cold hammer forged up in Maryland. They may be moving it to Tennessee from what I heard, but I'm not 100% sure on that. So very, very high-quality barrels. Uh, designed to last for sure. The sling swivel up front is rotatable so you can move it left-handed or right-handed operation. It's obviously a piston operated rifle so we have the uh, different settings on there. It's normal gas settings and then the non-normal or non-standard gas settings. You can move it with the tip of a bullet. Uh, a lot of things on this rifle can be done with the tip of a bullet. I think I have one here in my pocket which will actually get out. You guys hear construction in the background? I'm not sure if it comes up on the mic. That's my neighbor doing a little work but that's how you set it. It's very, very simple there. You can turn it with ease with the bullet. So moving on back beyond that, we have the handguards here. These are 1913 style rails on the sides. Uh, both sides of the rifle, they are removable if you want to uh, slim it up a little bit. We also have 1913 style rail right up front for attaching vertical foregrips and stuff like that. However, underneath this handguard section here, if you actually pull it up, if I can do it, <laughs> It reveals, this is actually the, I believe it's a 160 grenade launcher mount that you can put on there that the Italian military uses. From what I understand, they make a 1913 style attachment that you can actually buy from Beretta and put on there to give yourself a pick rail section on the whole uh, lower portion of the handguard if you choose to do so, or you can just leave it as is and run like weapon lights or stuff like that over here on the sides of the rifle. Moving on to the sights, it does come with sights, that's one thing to point out, you don't have to purchase these extra. They're flip up backup sights and uh, really they are backup sights, there's no getting around that. They're not all that precise, uh, that's for sure. Up front here we have the typical post which is uh, adjustable for elevation on the rear. We can also adjust it for elevation depending on the distance that you're shooting at, so that's sort of an interesting thing there. So you can uh, dial it in uh, from 1 to 600 yards. So if you want to use it that way, or if you just want to zero it at whatever distance and use your holdovers using the front sight, really either way you want to do it, up to you. Uh, to push them down, you're just going to push down, and there's a little button here on the side. Push that in, and it's the same on the rear sight. One thing to note, uh, the sights are typical, what we would consider AR height sights. Now, uh, with that height and the a little bit lower uh, comb here of our stock, one thing you get is sort of a chin weld if you're using your typical... AR height optics as you may have noticed in the intro and when we were shooting the groups out there. So um, a lot of folks have been running lower mount uh, optics on there like RMRs, delta points, maybe even a prime, uh, primary arm micro dot or aim point micro dot um, to give yourself a little bit more of a classic what we would consider here in the US cheek weld anyway to bring it down and bring your uh, line of sight just over where these sights actually sit currently. So really personal preference here, but that's the sights. One note that we should point out is here on the 1913 style rail on top, earlier versions had a loose rail. Uh, Beretta fixed that problem by inserting a pin here on the rear, rear, I should say. That pin 
uh, actually locks it in place so it's very solid now. So if you guys have one of the earlier ones and you uh, have a loose rattly rail, you can just call Brett up and they'll uh, send you that pin out to uh, pin it in place and you'll be good to go there. The rifle has a ton of ambidextrous features. Pretty much everything on it is ambidextrous actually now that I think of it, uh, which is something that a lot of folks out there really like. So the safety selector is uh, ambidextrous on both the right and left side of the pistol. It's mirrored design. There's nothing different there. The uh, bolt lock, or to lock the bolt to the rear, is ambidextrous on both sides up here on the front of the trigger guard. You can either push up on it to lock it back, or on the bottom of the trigger guard, you can actually push the big old button and lock it to the rear that way. If I can actually do it here on camera. There we go. So it's uh, able to be locked back like that. To release it, you're just going to push down on it. Very simple process. The mag release is the same ambidextrous over here on the right side to push in and as well on the left side of the rifle. So we'll just show you here. Take our factory mag, put it in there, and we can just drop free on the right side, or we can take it over here on the left side, drop it free just like that. For the bolt release, you can push down on either side, and it goes home. Now, those are you know your standard controls. There's a couple other things that you can switch out, which are really cool for ambidextrous use. First off, there's this little button right here on the back. So the rifle, as you've seen it, configured throughout the video is for right hand shooting. So I'm right handed and I've been shooting the rifle right handed as is my wife, which you've seen as well. So if you want to actually have the rifle eject to the left instead of ejecting to the right, all you need to do is take this button right here and push it in. And the rifle has dual ejectors and extractors, which is what enables you to do that. So at this point, the rifle will eject to the left to push it back. You just push back through the other side and it will eject to the right now. Really cool there. And the charging handle, as configured from the factory, comes on the uh, left-hand side of the rifle. To switch it over, there's a little indent groove right here in the uh, ejection port on both sides. You're going to take your charging handle and line it up with that little groove. If I can do it on camera, hopefully. Once you get to that point, you're just going to pull out. You should hear it click. Maybe. There it is. And you're just going to rotate this lever forward through to the other side, over to the right side. Now at this point, you just need to push it in and it should go right home. There you go. And now the charging handle is on the right side of the pistol, either for left-handed use or for folks who are just, again, really used to running AKs. So the ambidextrous features on the rifle really are awesome. One of the few things that isn't ambidextrous, I'd say, which really is in terms of function, but not in terms of form, is the stock. Now the stock to fold it, you're just gonna push the button right here fold it to the right side and get it to lock in. There you go. And uh, it's locked in really well. To unlock it, just pull out and it locks back into place. Very sturdy, very secure. Um, really, actually, I like the stock design a lot. It is uh, adjustable for length of pull. However, the length of pull is sort of minimal. If you guys are familiar with AKs, it's about similar to a Wasser length, or I should say Warsaw length stock, not Wasser, Warsaw length stock. So some U.S. shooters may want a little bit of a longer stock. Beretta said they may be coming out with one. We'll see on that. But that is uh, the word anyway. They may be producing a little bit of a longer stock that you can just drop right in here on the extension piece. I did a how-to video on cleaning this rifle, uh, cleaning and lubricating the rifle, which is really similar. And I went into the disassembly in detail. So we'll go into it a little bit here. But um, it's a pretty simple process overall. First thing we're going to do is obviously make sure it's clear. We've been handling it out here. It is clear. We'll lock the bolt to the rear. And uh, by pushing a little button here on the back that we talked about earlier. And there's these two takedown tabs up front, kind of like a Glock. And that's actually how you're going to remove your barrel. Now, one thing that folks have asked uh, on my Facebook page and other places is uh, when you remove the barrel and put it back in, does it affect accuracy? Well, I, I tested that and I saw less than, uh, well, less than an inch, about a half inch in terms of group size movement, which very easily could have just been me. So I would say... Practically speaking, no, it doesn't affect zero at all, so that's a good thing. But to remove the barrel, we're just going to pull down these two tabs here, pull out, and then that's your barrel uh, completely released. Now, for basic cleaning and maintenance, you don't need to actually release the barrel. I just wanted to show that's kind of a cool feature. So we're going to send the bolt home. At this point, we're going to fold our stock over to the right, which ex which exposes this uh, little button here on the back. So in order to remove the uh, trigger guard and uh, grip. We're just going to push in on that little button here. And again, in my cleaning and lubrication video, I go over this in detail. So that removes your trigger pack and grip and all that stuff. One thing I should point out is the grip is very similar to an A2 style grip. It feels 
a little bit fatter, which is nice, uh, but I know certainly a lot of people aren't there, out there aren't going to like that the ergonomics of that. I don't mind it. Um, yeah, I'd prefer an MOE or something like that for sure. Um, to remove the bolt, all we need to do is take our uh, bolt back to where we had it earlier, that little notch in the frame, pull it out, rotate the uh, charging handle forward, and remove our bolt and carrier. At this point, to disassemble the bolt and carrier, uh, you're just going to push forward here, turn 90 degrees, and that's going to allow your recoil spring to come out. And we take our, uh, char our charging handle, move it back to the side, and the bolt will come out. That's your completely disassembled rifle. Now, some folks have said that's really a complicated process and all this stuff. Uh, I'm going to tell you, after you do it a few times, it's not complicated at all. And uh, after seeing a lot of new shooters try to clean and uh, maintain their AR-15s, it's certainly no more difficult than that. So to put it back together, we're just going to reverse the process. And uh, it's not all that hard. The video is going kind of long at this point, at least that's how it feels for my rambling, so we'll try to sum it up here. Things I like about the rifle, I like the reliability, it's been awesome, zero complaints there. I like the ergonomics, the ambidextrous controls, the way you can switch from right hand operation to left hand operation all the way around. The stock locks up very solidly, I like that about it. I like the fact that it actually comes with sights, even though the sights really aren't all that great in my opinion, but the fact that it comes with it certainly is a good thing. Excellent cold hammer forged barrel. Uh, MP, bolt, barrel, all that stuff, great. So uh, all that stuff is awesome. I definitely dig it. Things I would improve, if you will, or change on the rifle if there was ever to be a Gen 2 introduced. I'd like to see some sort of uh, either a, a cheek riser or maybe even just a higher stock. I'm not sure if that's possible engineering-wise. If that's not, maybe lowering down the top rail to get more of a traditional cheek weld on it as opposed to the chin weld when using the optics and standard mount um, optics out there on the market, but it's not a huge deal. Certainly they function just fine with regular optics as you've seen throughout the video. It's certainly doable. Just if they ever come out with it, I would I think that'd be a welcome addition to it. Now, uh, Beretta has some additional barrels coming out for these like short barrel models in 5.56. I think they have some 300 blackout stuff in the works as well that we saw at NRA show. So those things are all good. Um, another big factor for a lot of folks is going to be price, obviously. I think the MSRP on this is $1,900 or something like that. Uh, real world street price as of today anyway is somewhere between $1,200 to $1,500 depending on where you look. Um, so it's expensive, uh, no getting around it. A lot of people will say, why would I get that when I could get you know, a Daniel Defense or a BCM AR in that range? Well, you certainly could. Um, no doubt about it, those are great products and if you want a great AR, there you go. If you want something different that's, you know, piston driven, has some really unique kind of control sets, but still uses a common round and, and common magazines, well, this is one I'd take a look at. If you guys have any questions about the rifle, anything I did or didn't cover in the video that you need clarification on, by all means, post below in the comments section. You can also post over at my Facebook page as always, but thanks for watching, guys. Thanks for subscribing, and I hope to see you in the next video.